Welcome back everyone to another quick tip. Today we're gonna to show tips on styling line charts. So here I have just a basic line chart and this is showing life expectancy over time for all of these different countries. And it has all the countries aggregated here into one line. Now you can split this up and I see this often, you can split it up by color. And here you get all of those different countries in their own line. And that's a good way to segment it. But I wanted to point out that you also have the option in this, this column selector to do a line by. And this has now split all the countries up by um, the line, but has kept it the same color. And why this is useful is because you can actually color and segment your lines by different things. So here I've done it by uh, region on the colors, and then I have the lines by the country. So I can actually see you know, all the European countries, all the Oceanic countries, all the, American, uh, the Americas right there. So that's useful. Um, here again, I have it back to just one color. Now they're all the same color, but the purpose of this dashboard is to focus on the United States. So what I wanna do is emphasize United States. And I can go into my visualization properties and I can go into colors. I'll go to countries here. I'll make this fixed. They're all the same color here. And I'm gonna add a rule where if it's equal to USA, then make it black. Okay, so now that is a way I'm emphasizing just the United States as it compares to other countries. Now I can customize line charts further by starting with a scatter plot. So this is a scatter plot with individual countries with these different colors, and you can see that all trending here. This isn't really a line chart. But what I can do is I can go into properties and I can go into lines and curves, or sorry, into line connection, and I can draw a separate value per each country. And now this put a line between all of those. So what I'm gonna do is actually put this in the foreground, that line, and I'm gonna take the size of this down all the way to the minimum. So in my line connection, I have this by country. If my data wasn't ordered sequentially by year, I could put year in here as well. I don't need to because my data is uh, ordered sequentially, but that will make sure all the lines are drawn in the right order between the points. And I can also just increase the thickness there. So this is now colored by country, and that's pretty similar to my other line chart, so there's not a lot of advantage here. But one thing I can do is I can change this to my colors to my uh, y-axis and my life expectancy. And here I have now a gradient color scheme. So if I wanna make this like, let's say red, you can see that as the values get higher for individual points, that the, the line's actually turning red, and you can see the actual gradient and the values there. So I have something here, I have uh, another color scheme already saved in here. So this is the color scheme I'm using for the rest of this. And so you can see that gradient a little bit better. Now the downside of doing it this way is that if you use labels, then the labels are actually gonna show for all the different points. And so this is not really easy to read. What I can do is I can actually go to this um, other option and I can go to link copy to data table and analysis. And this is the data table that I have, all data, um, unpivoted. And I'm just gonna call this my USA reference line. So now this data table has been added and I can actually go into my data canvas and I can see that this data table has all the years, all the countries, all the variables, all the values. And what I wanna do is I really wanna limit this table to just the country and the variable of interest. I just wanna subset it by that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a uh, filter transformation and I'm gonna say country equals USA and I want the indicator name to be equal to my life expectancy value, okay? So I'll hit okay there. And you'll see now this is just one table for the USA over time with life expectancy. Now coming back to this chart where I have the scatter plot, I can go into my settings and I can go into my lines and curves and there's this option to add a line from column values and we're gonna use this a, a couple times in this session. So here I can select maybe my USA reference line. Um, that's what I had just created and I have the year and I have the value and I'm gonna give it a custom name. I'm gonna just call it USA and I'm gonna hit okay. And so now this line is right here, okay? I can, let me make this a little clearer by making the other ones a little bit smaller and on my lines and curves, I'll make this a, uh, a little bit thicker here. So now I have the USA there 
and I can turn on the label for this line as well, so you can see USA right there. And that allows me to style this one individual line totally different from the rest and also still get the label in there. So now the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to add some limits. Like here I have this dotted line for like the maximum and I have another dotted line for the minimum. I could do a 90th percentile, 10th percentile. And I also have a, a little bit of shading in here as well. For this example, I'm gonna use this air quality data set. And this has different observations over dates and times for different pollutants and different measurements of those pollutants at each of these date and time values. So just to visualize this real quickly, I can go into line chart and I can go ahead and I can add each individual uh, variable here. And you can kind of see that across. Um, what I like to do with my time series data is unpivot it. I'm gonna just do that real quick. So I've renamed this pollutant and measurement and this has for each pollutant on each date and time that measurement. And I'll hit OK here and OK. And now what this is going to do is it's actually going to allow me to remove all this and just set this as measurement once. And I can go ahead and split this just like I did with the other line charts. I can split this by pollutant. So this was covered a little bit in the previous quick tip video from a couple weeks ago where we talked about pivoting and unpivoting if you want to know a little bit more about how that works. But here I wanted to, to show you about this data and then we're gonna go ahead and do some aggregations on 90th percentile, 10th percentile, uh, maximum minimums and, and add some shading. So let's look at how this data is working first. So I'm gonna add a scatter plot here and I'm gonna make this just the date and I'm going to just kind of narrow in on a region. So just narrow in on a narrow time span. And you can see here that there's a lot of measurements for one day. I can make this a little bit easier to see by just narrowing down to one pollutant. So in one day, there is up to like six measurements. And so that allows me to do maximum and minimum and aggregations for these days. So what I'm gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add this from uh, the link copy in a data table. And now I'm just gonna leave this named as air quality two. So here's my data canvas, I have air quality two. And I'm gonna add some calculated columns here. So I'll go to data, add calculated column, air quality two, and I'll do for my 90th percentile P90, and I'll add a measurement in there. Now, I'm just gonna show you what, what this is gonna do. If I just leave it like this, as just that P90 over the measurement, what it's gonna do is actually calculate across all of the time and all of the pollutants. And so here it's all gonna be the same value all the way down but I really wanna segment this by day. I want a different 90th percentile per the daily measurements. So what I really wanna do is in this, this column, what I, what I wanna do is actually use an over function and I'm gonna do this over date. Okay, so now I added these five aggregations, 90th percentile, 10th percentile, 50th percentile, minimum and maximum, and these will all change over the different days. So what I can do here to, to get this all down to one variable, so I, I already filtered, but I'm gonna actually right click here and create a filter transformation. And what that's gonna do is pass that down from my original table, my air quality table, it's gonna create this filter rows transformation here. And that may, means the downstream table is only going to have this one pollutant that I selected. Now, if I don't wanna fix it like that, I could do the filtering just on this table itself and I can just add a filter rows here, just like we did with USA and life expectancy. So I could add that filter in here and I can put in just the, the pollutant name I want, or I can even create a document property so I can change this with a dropdown. I'm not gonna show that, but there is a video on con creating control panels that goes into document properties and controls. So if you watch that and you're watching this, you should be able to figure out how you can parameterize some of this stuff and bring in actually document properties to make this dynamic. Now going back to just my chart here, so we have this scatter plot, and what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this, and I'm going to go back into my properties, and for lines and curves, I'm going to add a line from column values, and you guessed it, I'm gonna add each individual line. So I got P90 here, I'm gonna call this P90, and I'm gonna style this with maybe a uh, dotted line like that, and I'm gonna do this again for the other aggregations. Okay, so I went ahead and added these different lines for these different aggregations, and you can kind of see them here. I'll go ahead and change the color to yellow so it's a little bit easier to see, and I'm gonna take the size down. 
So now you can see I have the maximum and minimum and the, the percentiles and the dotted lines. I can also put this right into my legend by going into my legend putting lines and curves in. So now you can see what each line represents. And here I can also add some shading. So I'll go into um, my line connection and I'll order each line or I'll draw a separate line for each date. And you'll see these vertical lines there. And I'll also order each line by date as well. And I'm gonna bring this to the foreground and I'm gonna make it really fat. And now, you know, when you kind of zoom out, you'll be able to see that these values are all shaded between the minimum and maximum. And that's the way I had this, this arranged. So, you know, I could kind of play with my configuration here if I wanna shade different regions and do different things like that. Um, I can also view this again with the other pollutants all together. But this is a, kind of a great way to style those lines individually and get a little bit more out of your line charts. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We just put out a bunch of Spotfire 10 training videos. You'll find it on the YouTube channel. There's over 30 videos. It goes end to end into beginner and intermediate topics. So make sure you check that out. We're continuing to put out more content every week and we'll catch you next week. Thanks.